Hey, what's up? My name is Tim with Decorative Concrete of Virginia, and today I'm going to show you how we made these concrete countertops. The first thing we have to do is put plywood on the existing cabinetry so that it can hold up the countertops. I own a concrete business and I make a lot of videos about concrete. If you are interested in that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button down below. These countertops are going in the kitchen at our new shop. The cabinets are really old, so we're going to have to do a few things to make them a little more sturdy so that they can hold the countertop up. We're going to pour the concrete countertops in place today. This is not something we normally do, but we're doing it on this job because we're in a hurry and we just want to get it done. We're installing a 1x4 on the face of the cabinets, and this is going to create the overhang for the countertop. We're going to remove this board later. We're able to mount this 1x4 directly to the cabinets because they are old cabinets and the top edge needs to be trimmed out anyways. If you're putting this on new cabinetry, you would want to brace this board down to the ground. We're using PVC 1x4s to create the forms for the edge of the countertop. We're going to attach these to the sides of the cabinets so that our countertop will be 1.5 inches thick. It's probably overkill to caulk all the seams in this. We're going to caulk all the cracks, and then after we caulk the cracks, we're going to cover the surface of the plywood with plastic. We're doing a drop-in sink, so we didn't have to spend a lot of time forming the sink, so we just cut some strips and screwed them directly into the plywood. We're using AR glass scrim as our primary reinforcement today. We probably should be using glass fiber in the mix too, but we didn't have any in the shop. Once the glass scrim is cut to fit the countertop, we're going to remove it and place it aside so that we can put it back in the countertop once we start pouring the concrete. It's important to make sure you have enough materials measured so that you can do the entire project without having to stop to measure materials. If there's a long delay from one batch to the next, it can create a weak spot in the concrete. We know that every 50 pounds of our concrete mix will do 5 square feet of countertop at 1 inch thick, so we use that formula to determine how much we need to make ahead of time. We're going to mix all the materials today using our new Colomix XM2 Forced Action Mixer. The order in which you add ingredients for a concrete mix is important. So we're going to add water first, and then polymer, and then sand, and then color. We're going to make sure that the color gets evenly distributed through the entire mix. So we're going to let the color mix for 90 seconds before we add the Portland cement. I really love this new Colomix mixer because it turns the job of mixing 100 pounds of concrete into a one-man operation. With a lot of mixers, you would have to actually have them running as you're adding materials. But I really love how we can just dump all the materials in and hit go, and it will actually mix them up better than anything else we've used before. So after we add the Portland cement, we're going to set the mixer for three minutes and turn it on, and then we'll be ready to pour the countertop. This mixer will actually mix epoxy and self-leveling overlays and a bunch of other products. I'll tell you more about that in a future video, but for today, it did an amazing job at mixing this concrete countertop mix. I forgot to mention this earlier, but we attached a 1 8 inch thick piece of lattice along the back of the countertop. You can see it on the right side of the screen. We're going to use that later so that our strike board will sit on top of that strip and then sit on our forms so that we can make sure our countertop is level. We like to place the concrete by hand so that we can pack the concrete in every corner of the forms so that we don't leave any air pockets. Once the concrete forms are a little over half full, we're going to place our AR scrim that we cut earlier. We take extra care to make sure that the scrim gets seated into the concrete and then we finish filling up the forms. You can see here that Troy's just using a piece of lumber and he's letting that lumber ride on the piece of lattice against the wall and it's riding on our forms on the other side and he's striking the concrete off level to the top of the forms. 
Once the concrete is level, we're going to take a magnesium float and we're going to work the surface of the concrete. We're going to pay special attention to low spots. If we find a low spot, we're just going to take a little bit of concrete out of our bucket and fill the low spot and get it smooth with the float. I always like to take a small bucket with some concrete. We lay plastic over it. That way it slows the set time down of that concrete so that if something goes wrong later, we'll have a little bit of extra that we can use to patch with. You really have to wait a long time for the concrete to set up before you can start putting a trowel on it. So we just took that time to clean our mixer up and put everything away. I really appreciate the thoughtfulness of the design of the XM2. It's a great mixer. It's easy to use, easy to move around. And I'm thankful that Colomix gave it to us to try. We waited a couple of hours for the concrete to set up at this point, and we worked it a few times with the magnesium float, but it's getting to where it's almost time to switch over to using a steel trowel. I think we got on this concrete a little bit too early with the steel trowel because I noticed a few air bubbles starting to appear in the surface. It's not a huge deal though. You just take the corner of the trowel, pop the air bubbles, and then slick it back smooth with the trowel. We did have a few issues stripping the forms on the concrete. You can see as we strip the forms that some of the material actually stuck to the forms. We get so tired of waiting on concrete to set up and I think we just stripped the forms a little bit too early here, but it's a good thing we saved that bucket of concrete earlier in the video because we just used that material to touch up the sides. I got this tip from a Futung Chang book that I read probably 15 years ago. We're just using a sheet of plastic to ease the sharp edges on the corners of this countertop. We do a lot of stained concrete floors and I always really like the look of a hard troweled concrete floor. So I went home for a couple hours and I, and I came back out that night and I just took a hand trowel and I just troweled it as hard and as fast as I could. Concrete is pretty much hard at this point, but I took the trowel and I just went back over it again, just trying to create that hand troweled look that you see on so many concrete floors. We let the concrete cure for about a week. During that time, we did the top backsplash and now we're back to seal the concrete. We're using a reactive penetrating sealer that has to be diluted with water for the first coat. We load this mixture into a spray bottle and all we do is spray it on the concrete and keep it wet for 10 minutes. Once 10 minutes passes, we're gonna wipe the concrete down until there's a smooth, even film across the entire surface. Once that dries, we repeat the same process again with the diluted sealer. Now that we've primed the countertop twice with diluted sealer, we're gonna do two coats of sealer at full strength, and this time we're only gonna let it stay wet for about a minute. And once we finish that, we're done. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would be great if you hit the like button down below. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.